Now, as a child, weren't you taught not to play with your food? Well, apparently these astronauts weren't. Floating jello cubes across the cabin while in zero-g is a lot of fun. But it is also a sign of a potential problem called space euphoria. No one ever considered that extreme happiness in space could become a severe problem. But it can become a serious problem, and that's no kidding. For many years, space euphoria went undetected, although it was right there, front and center, for all to see. When Apollo 14 astronaut Alan Shepard smuggled golf balls onto the moon and tried to create a tiny moon for the moon by attempting to hit a golf ball into orbit around the moon, everyone thought it was funny. Apollo 16 astronaut Charles Duke thought it would be funny if he tried to compete with the 1972 Olympic athletes back on Earth. He attempted to outjump the Olympic athletes to benefit from the 1-6 gravity on the moon. Duke jumped so high that he rotated onto his back and fell crashing onto the life support system in his backpack. It could have been a fatal fall if the bag had cracked. Duke's commander, John Young, said, That's not funny. And it sure wasn't. Yet, when Apollo 17 astronauts began dancing and singing children's nursery songs while collecting rock samples, everyone still thought it was cute. Space euphoria again went unnoticed. As early as 1965, when Ed White became the first American to walk in space on a tethered spacewalk, his space euphoria became evident. He stayed out much longer than was necessary to test his mobility with the very first jetpack, or MMU as it was called, officially the manned maneuvering unit. In his own words, I'm not coming back. This is fun. Finally, when ordered to return to his Gemini spacecraft, Ed White said it was the saddest day of my life. Obviously, something sinister is at work with space euphoria. Weightlessness, combined with the view of Earth passing below, creates an exhilaration that overcomes all sense of duty. It is the great danger of space euphoria. Now, in hindsight, the effects of space euphoria could be seen when Apollo 17 astronauts drove the lunar rover on the moon. They exceeded the recommended speed limit and could be heard whooping and yelling as the rover rocked onto two wheels, even becoming airborne at times. Canadian astronaut Chris Hadfield was busy at work during his tethered EVA extravehicular activity when he paused to look over his shoulder. The glory of space smacked him in the face. He was so emotionally overwhelmed at the magnificent beauty of the Milky Way galaxy that tears began to fill up Hadfield's eyes. Now in space, tears do not flow down your cheeks. They pool up in your eyes. Hadfield had become blinded by tears of joy. But Hadfield, against protocol, refused to tell his supervisors on Earth. Only after he was no longer able to work did Hadfield speak a famous quote, Houston, I have a problem. It was a direct result of space euphoria. Astronaut Hadfield managed to get back into the space shuttle, but his EVA was not fulfilled. Space euphoria had interfered. There is another aspect of space euphoria that deserves serious attention. It is something called the overview effect. Weightlessness in space affects everything from the physical and psychological health of the astronauts to the physics of using all the mechanical equipment of the spacecraft. However, weightlessness in space is not due to a lack of gravity. Astronauts orbit Earth less than 300 miles up, called LEO, low Earth orbit. There's plenty of gravity in low Earth orbit. The Earth's gravity keeps the Moon in orbit, and the Moon is about 250,000 miles away. In fact, a 150-pound astronaut would weigh 142 pounds in LEO. Weightlessness in space is due to freefall, not lack of gravity. What goes up must come down. The rocket blasts off, and about 8 minutes later, the engines shut off. The spacecraft begins to fall back to Earth. Fortunately, by this time, the rocket has achieved orbital velocity, which is about 17,500 miles per hour. So that it falls towards Earth, but never hits the Earth. It keeps falling and falling around and around, precisely in the same curved path as the surface of the Earth. It's in orbit. It is freefall. Even though everyone calls it zero-g, it's not. If you were to place a bathroom scale under your feet when in freefall, it would show zero you would weigh nothing. That's because the bathroom scale is falling too. The exciting thing is that astronauts retain all their muscle power. Their mass stays the same. Therefore, they can lift heavy equipment in space that would weigh hundreds or even thousands of pounds on Earth. 
astronauts become superhumans in space. And that creates another unusual situation. There are lots of unusual situations in space. On the very first trip to the moon, the Apollo 8 astronauts were not even scheduled to look back and photograph the Earth. Apollo 8 astronauts took only a limited number of pictures of Earth. That's unusual and kind of weird. But Earthrise from the Moon became perhaps the most influential environmentalist picture of the 20th century, and it wasn't even planned. But this is the key to understanding the overview effect – surprise at the unexpected. Even today, almost all globes of Earth are not of Earth. Globes in schools and libraries show each country, usually in different colors. Each country, sure enough, contains a star, but it is to mark the capital city of that country. It is not how the Earth looks from space. These globes are not globes of the planet Earth. In fact, it isn't easy to even find a globe of the planet Earth. Read the labels on these classroom globes. The geopolitical world. These are globes of a place called the world. There is no planet called the world. The world does not live in space. It lives on someone's desk or shelf. The definition of space is geological in origin. Space is defined as existing up to, but not including, the atmosphere of Earth. Earth isn't even an astronomical object. It explains why the very first mission to the Moon, the Apollo 8 mission, had not scheduled any pictures of Earth. Selfies weren't invented then. It also explains why the psychological impact of seeing Earth rise from the Moon was so profound. It was a unique and totally new perception for which any and all humans were utterly unprepared. Seeing Earth in space was a complete surprise. Imagine yourself floating in space outside the spacecraft. You are surrounded by the Milky Way galaxy blazing with millions of stars. The planet Earth is a blue marble passing beneath your feet. Pretty heady stuff. How would you react? Would it change you? Apollo 9 astronaut Rusty Schweiker felt strongly that he was what he called the sensing element for humanity. What does he mean? It's the overview effect kicking in. Schweikert felt that he was connected to all the people on Earth. He compared it to being born into a new existence. And astronaut Schweikert is not the only one who felt the overview effect. Apollo 14 astronaut Edgar Mitchell had this to say about being in space. It was rather an extension of the same universal process that evolved our molecules. And what I felt was an extraordinary personal connectedness with it. I experienced what has been described as an ecstasy of unity. I not only saw the connectedness, I felt it and experienced it sentiently. I was overwhelmed with the sensation of physically and mentally extending out into the cosmos. Some years after returning from space, astronaut Mitchell started an institute to study the brainwaves of people who had been in space. And yes, they are different. According to Mitchell's institute's research, the euphoric sensation of oneness with the universe creates brain waves similar to meditating monks. Mitchell's studies were so significant that NASA launched a special space shuttle mission in 1998 just to study the effects of space on the brain. The Neurolab mission studied brain cells of laboratory animals, and the astronaut crew too, as brain cells tried to adapt to the freefall environment in low Earth orbit. Well, we can't all be astronauts, but now, we can all access virtual reality experiences of what the astronauts saw in space. The internet has opened up our Earth-bound point of view to share the unity and oneness of the overview effect and give us a small taste of the space euphoria astronauts get in space. What you see in this picture is a puffball mushroom. A man was fishing on the river when he discovered the thing. It measured 81 inches across and weighed around 52 pounds when he cut it. Oh, and did you know that in terms of genetic comparisons, mushrooms are more closely related to us than to plants? This turtle was found on the beach in northern Wisconsin. In a small seaside town in Denmark, people have made the world's tallest sandcastle. According to the Guinness World Records, this castle is 69.4 feet tall and weighs nearly 5,000 tons. Here is the Hyperion the tallest tree in the world. You can see it in the Redwood National Park in California. It has grown to be 380 feet tall, which means that it's taller than the Statue of Liberty. 
Imagine you go out to the garden and see this almost three foot tall dandelion. What would you do? When people are very young, they often think about breaking some Guinness record. It might be running faster or jumping higher than the previous record holder, but growing the largest watermelon and still an accountant from Tennessee grew a watermelon that weighed 350 pounds. In Canada, there's a cylindrical storage tank painted to resemble a Coke can. It's labeled as the world's largest Coca-Cola can. Meet Hercules. According to the Guinness World Records, he is the largest living feline in the world. Hercules is an adult male liger living in a wildlife reserve in South Carolina, USA. In total, he measures 10 feet in length, stands 4 feet at the shoulder, and weighs 922 pounds. Hercules also eats around 30 pounds of meat every day. Taking a picture of a large caterpillar on a toy earth mover is fun. This carrot probably had its roots deep in the soil, and now here it is in the caring arm of a human. Even if you only eat this chestnut, you'll probably already feel full. Here is a rebel berry. Imagine you're at a cash point and the machine keeps rejecting its sole purpose. You know, reading the barcode and then you notice that a small line has formed behind you. This barcode probably won't let this happen to you. It's a good barcode. Who is this lucky person? I mean, not only did they find the biggest piece of chip, but it was also in a single piece, not broken. I guess someone is throwing a party. I bet your eyes first go to the fire extinguisher on the floor. Only after that will you notice the small one on the wall. This match and that fire extinguisher could be relatives. The grapest of all grapes is here. Probably every meal for the next 15 days included green onions. You know, to eat it while it's still fresh. I loved how the glasses looked compared to the onions. This family could make a lemonade for the whole neighborhood. In 2003, Aaron Shamul grew the heaviest lemon in the world on his farm. The circumference of the lemon was 29 inches and it weighed about 12 pounds. It grew together with another lemon, almost as big. Look at this huge frog. Now might be a good time to debunk this myth. You won't get warts if you touch a frog. This myth might still be around because many frogs have wart-like bumps on their skin. These regular-sized penne pieces seem to be listening to the wise words of the longest one. The tallest penne has named itself Penegetti. It says that if you believe in yourself, you can grow to be as long as spaghetti. If your favorite fruit is strawberry, this one is for you. It looks like a snake, I know, but it isn't. Make a guess. It's a zucchini. This pine cone looks as if someone has photoshopped it to be longer. A prawn as big as your hand. Any thoughts on this? A powerful wind gust. And this rabbit might be the first of its kind to fly. Look how small other things in the picture look. The Chinese giant salamander is one of the largest salamanders in the world. The blue whale is the largest animal of all time. This creature weighs around 198 tons and are up to 98 feet long. The blue whale's tongue can be as heavy as an elephant and its heart as heavy as a car. To feed such a huge body, they only eat tiny plankton. This one here is a giant cookie. I'm not joking. One company baked this cookie monster in 2003 and it was 102 feet wide and weighed over 40,000 pounds. Plus, it was edible. They cut the cookie into small pieces and sold them in a special commemorative box. It was a chocolate chip cookie, if you've ever been wondering about the type. What do you think about this absolute unit of a snail? A grown-up person's hand is there for comparison. Either these people have shrunk or this table is too large. I bet the dog thinks that it's still a baby. No more waiting in line to get gas. The Tsar Bell, aka the Royal Bell, and people nearby. 
the hand of Jeff Dave, a wrestling champion. I would forget how to swim if I saw this lion's mane jellyfish. It generally lives in the northern Atlantic and northern Pacific Oceans. Is this a hat or a tent? This coffee cup is suitable for people who cannot start their mornings without drinking coffee, or those who say there's never enough coffee. Jackfruit is a common fruit in the Philippines, Southeast Asia, India, and Central Africa. The heaviest jackfruit in the world was grown in India. It weighed almost 95 pounds, plus it was 22.5 inches long. This flower is called the Rafflesia arnoldi. It's the world's largest blooming flower. It's a rare kind found in the rainforest of Indonesia. It can be 3 feet across and weigh up to 15 pounds. Interestingly, it has no visible leaves, roots, or stems. It attaches itself to a host plant to get water and nutrients. The next one is the tallest snow person in the world. The record is set in an Austrian ski region. The former record was set in Maine, USA. These shoes belong to Robert Wadlow. He was one of the tallest people ever, nearly 9 feet tall. Some of his shoes can still be found across America because Robert Wadlow never really wore them. He was a roving ambassador for a shoe company. He would arrive in a town, give the local shoe store a promotional size 37 shoe, then move on. He continued to grow throughout his life, so his final shoe size was 44.5. Think of the biggest cave you've ever seen. I bet that cave can easily fit into this cave in Vietnam. It measures 1.35 billion cubic feet. It's twice as large as the world's second biggest cave. So it's hard to break this record. Experts believe that it dates back to 2 to 5 million years ago. The cave formed from soluble limestone. Look at this massive bird. It no longer exists though. Its kind is named Argentavis. These creatures used to live in Argentina around 6 million years ago. Their wingspan could reach 21 feet. Oddly enough, their eggs were smaller than an ostrich egg. We started with one of the largest mushrooms in the world. So, this picture might look ordinary. Yet, you're looking at the world's largest organism. The Armillaria ostoyae, or honey mushroom. You can find the largest organism on Earth in the Molar National Forest, Oregon. The mushroom covers over 1,500 hectares. Think of it as a long chain of mushrooms. Throughout its 8,650-year-long life, the honey mushroom has spread its tendrils through the soil. Now, some separate mushrooms poke out of the ground every once in a while. This fungus exists inside trees too. A study says that at least 112 trees have it. It's considered the largest organism due to the wide area it covers. Every beach needs this giant umbrella. It was made in the United Arab Emirates to celebrate the Emirates happiness journey in 2018. The umbrella is 80 feet in diameter. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. So, are you tired of boring old Earth? Want to know what lies beyond the starry night sky? You're not the only one. People have been asking the same question for centuries. Luckily, scientists have got you covered. They've discovered a lot of amazing places light years away from our blue planet. Just one light year is about 6 trillion miles. Mind-blowing, huh? So hop on, the spaceship of knowledge is lifting off. Your first stop is 2.5 billion light years away from Earth. It's a quasar one of the brightest objects in the universe and the first one to be discovered. A quasar isn't a star, but a distant galaxy. This extremely bright object gets its power from a supermassive black hole. A disk of matter swirls around the black hole and creates friction. It's kind of like when you're cold and rub your hands together to stay warm. The friction between the palms creates heat, making you feel nice and cozy. The same happens in the quasar. Just the amount of heat is bigger, way bigger. I hope you remember to pack sunscreen lotion. The temperature at the heart of this quasar can reach 18 trillion degrees Fahrenheit. Also, there is light, a lot of it. 
this celestial object shines a hundred times brighter than all the stars in its galaxy put together. Well, it's time to cool down a bit. Minus 457 degrees Fahrenheit, to be precise. This is the temperature of a young planetary nebula called the Boomerang Nebula. It sits 5,000 light-years away from Earth. NASA's Hubble telescope caught images of the formation in 1998. It's composed of gas coming from a star near the end of its life cycle. Inside the nebula, it's windier than in the Windy City. Winds reach speeds up to 310,000 miles per hour. And you gotta thank them for the nebula's chilling temperatures. Researchers were just impressed to find out that the temperature of the Boomerang Nebula is just one degree above absolute zero. Zero Kelvin should be the coldest temperature possible. This is the point where all molecular and atomic activity stops. Brr, makes you want to crank up the thermostat in your spaceship. Next, you're going to a place you might not want to visit. Sorry. So it's the most massive black hole. This giant is located at the heart of a large galaxy some 10.4 billion light-years from our planet. Its mass is 66 billion times greater than that of the Sun, enough to make our galaxy's supermassive black hole feel ashamed. It has a mass of merely 4.5 million times that of the Sun. But you better not get near any of them, as a black hole's diet consists of matter. By calculating how much matter they consume, scientists can determine their rate of expansion. And those black holes have quite an appetite. Astronomers believe there are stupendously large black holes, or slabs, hiding somewhere in the universe. If they're real, their mass is estimated to be greater than 100 billion times that of the Sun. Now, it's time to snack on something lighter. The spaceship enters the Kepler-51 system. It's home to the lightest planets in the known universe, called superpuffs sounds fluffy enough, and it is. These planets' mass is either the same or slightly greater than that of Earth. But this doesn't mean they're small. Think of them as giant cotton candies the size of Jupiter. They are newly born planets whose atmosphere is still cooling down. You might want to wait for this process to be over, though, as 500 degrees Fahrenheit is too hot to handle. But for experts, super puffs are special. These planets are incredibly rare, as they've managed to discover less than 20 so far. Now, are you up for a race? Let's say the ship you're on is traveling at a speed of 25,000 miles per hour. This is the current human speed record. It was set by NASA's astronaut TRIO from the Apollo 10 mission in 1969. And no, I am not talking about Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin. That was the Apollo 11 mission later that year. Right now, you're going to race against a star 18,000 light-years from Earth. Your biggest advantage is that this is a neutron star. It was formed when another massive star ran out of nuclear fuel and couldn't support itself anymore. Think of a car running on an empty tank. Victory couldn't be any closer, right? Well, not quite. When a massive star feels like its time is up, it shrinks and starts spinning. Figure skaters do the same during a spin. They fold in their arms to increase rotation to the maximum. This neutron star is the champion of the universe. It spins at a speed of 157 million miles per hour. That's roughly 27% of the speed of light. Whoa! Are you running low on energy at this point? Time to charge up from a gamma ray burst. Gamma rays are electromagnetic waves generated by various forms of radiation. These bursts were fairly unknown to science until the late 1960s. Satellites equipped with gamma-ray detectors accidentally recorded huge outbursts of radiation outside of our solar system. What were they? Nothing dark, definitely, as these are the most energetic forms of light. Scientists believe that gamma-ray bursts happen when two neutron stars collide and form a black hole. The other explanation is that they are in the final stage in the life of a supernova. This event happens when a star decides to go out with a bang. Gamma ray bursts shine brighter than a diamond. They are a million trillion times brighter than the sun. Talk about an energy boost. Ah, your mood is lightened up by now. You want to visit a place that has a draw to it. No, it's not a beach resort, but a magnetar. It's a neutron star with a twist. 
Magnetars have a magnetic field that is a trillion times stronger than that on our planet. But don't fall for their strong appeal. Let's just say you won't live to tell a tale if you get too close to one. In 2004, a flare that came off the surface of a magnetar managed to compress Earth's magnetic field from a distance of 50,000 light years. Quite impressive for a star the size of a city. Makes you wish to team up with this oversized magnet to commit the greatest heist ever. A magnetar has the ability to swipe all the credit cards on planet Earth from a distance halfway to the moon. Luckily for humans, NASA has discovered only 31 of these stars so far. You have barely escaped the pull of a magnetar. Suddenly, you start to sense a strange force drawing you away from your home base. It is the Great Attractor, one of the biggest mysteries of the universe. This massive gravitational irregularity has been pulling us closer and closer to it for billions of years. Scientists estimate that the Great Attractor is located at the center of the Linnea Kea supercluster. The name means immeasurable heaven in Hawaiian. It represents a gigantic collection of planets, stars, and asteroids. Our home galaxy, the Milky Way, is just a speck in this enormous supercluster. According to the Big Bang Theory, not the TV show, the real theory, the universe has been expanding in all directions. But the mysterious Great Attractor is slowing things down. How exactly? Researchers still need to figure this one out. On the bright side, they are good at naming things. The end of the universe would be called the Big Crunch, if there's anyone left to call it that. Your journey, too, ends at the edge of the universe. The most distant galaxy from Earth is the oldest one as well. The galaxies that form first after the Big Bang have drifted the furthest. So every time advanced telescopes detect a far, far away dot, they give scientists an image of the origins of the universe. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. If you're picking a vacation spot, you should definitely look at this list. And then remember to never visit any of these places. They're incredibly dangerous, and life struggles to exist in them at all. This is Ethiopia's geothermal field, Dalal. With toxic green pools and bright orange sand, the landscape here resembles another planet. Scientists believe that it shares a good resemblance with the surface of Jupiter's moon, Io. The bright yellows and oranges just scream that this place is poisonous. And your instincts are right. Dalal is full of sulfur, which makes it uninhabitable. This place looks so crazy because it's actually in the mouth of a volcano. What's even more strange is that, unlike normal volcanoes, this one is inverted. Most volcanoes rise into the sky like mountains, but Dalal is indented. The mouth of the volcano sits at 160 feet below sea level. The surface above the volcano is covered with water reservoirs, soil, and crazy mineral formations that look like coral reefs. All of this is created by the activity of the magma, about two and a half miles underground. The magma heats the water in the ground, and it begins to rise through layers of salt. When the volcano is live, it produces a lot more magma, which forces more water up to the surface. The water brings minerals up with it, and they create the fake coral reef. The breathtaking visuals at Dalal don't end at the mineral formations. There's even a purple and yellow lake. You wouldn't want to risk swimming in it, though. The lake's temperature is above that of boiling water. The heat is one of the main reasons that this isn't the perfect vacation destination. Dalal's average temperature is higher than anywhere else on Earth, at about 94 degrees Fahrenheit. By comparison, the average temperature across the United States is about 54 degrees. This part of the world barely ever experiences rain, so it's one of the driest places on the planet as well. Amazingly, people were once settled in this incredibly hostile climate. The small village evacuated, though, leaving Dalal deserted. Dalal has the highest average temperature on Earth, but there is a place with a higher recorded peak temperature. Death Valley, California, was recorded to reach 134 degrees Fahrenheit at one point. That's so hot that you couldn't even fry an egg on the rocks there. 
it would just burn within a few seconds. Unlike Dalal, it isn't always this unhospitable. It can be comfortable for humans, from November to February, and it has even seen rain and snow. The temperature might not even be far from what you have at home. This valley is also home to some stones that were nicknamed the Sailing Stones. These huge rocks sit at the bottom of a dried lake, and they sometimes move without anyone knowing why. They weigh several hundred pounds, and it wouldn't be possible for a person to move them. So the process was a complete mystery for years. After a while, scientists noticed that the stones moved infrequently. Maybe only once every three or four years. They only move a couple of dozen feet, too. Using this information, they eventually realized that the rocks were actually being moved whenever it got icy. On the coldest nights, at the bottom of the dried up lake, a thin layer of ice began to form. Then the wind would begin to move the rocks slowly, at a speed of 6 to 16 feet per minute along the bottom of the lake. The stones could only go so small a distance because it was icy so infrequently. We travel from the hottest place on the planet to the coldest, Vostok Station, Antarctica. The lowest temperature ever on Earth was recorded here, at negative 128 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 18 times colder than your refrigerator. It isn't just freezing, though. The station is located at an altitude of 11,500 feet. At this elevation, there's much less oxygen, which can cause dizziness and breathing problems. The people who work here have to experience the polar night. This means that they spend 120 days a year in total darkness. All of these extreme conditions combine to make it one of the most dangerous places on Earth. There is another place called Death Valley in Russia. It isn't dangerous because of high temperatures or dryness. Instead, it gained its reputation because of some scary, mystical events. Some people traveling through the Russian wilderness stumbled upon strange structures that looked a bit like giant, half-buried cauldrons. The travelers used them as shelter from the elements, and some disappeared without a trace. When people returned to the same area, they fell ill. Nobody understood what the cauldrons were or what was happening, so they began to gain a supernatural reputation. The valley has been subject to a number of investigations in which researchers try to solve the mystery of the area. They went on exploratory expeditions and even got a better view of the situation from the air. On one of these expeditions, a pilot discovered a new cauldron. When he landed and found it, though, he found that it was actually just the opening to a small cave. The modern understanding is that all of the cauldrons were really just strange rock formations and entrances to caves. The tired and confused travelers were just bewildered by their unusual appearance. The illnesses and disappearances were likely a result of the dangerous gases released in local geothermal activity. In reality, the travelers were probably camping out in an area with an accumulation of CO2 or other poisonous gases. Most of these places have been so dangerous that they make it difficult for even the hardiest bacteria to survive. But some places are so dangerous because of the creatures that live there. Snake Island is thriving and filled with life, but it's just as inhospitable to people as the other places on this list. It sits 21 miles off the coast of Brazil and hosts some of the world's most venomous snakes. Some people claimed that there could be as many as half a million snakes in total. That turns out to be an exaggeration, though. In reality, there are likely only about 4,000 venomous snakes. The movement of the Earth trapped them on the island many years ago. Initially, there was a strip of land connecting the island to the mainland. But over time, changing sea levels and land movements cut them off. The snakes and a few other animals were left to live on the island in isolation. It isn't just that you shouldn't visit this island. You're actually banned from setting foot on it, unless you have a special pass for researching the island's wildlife. This measure is in place to protect people from the venomous snakes and to protect the rare species of snake from humanity. The only man-made object on the island is a lighthouse, designed to help ships avoid the island. When it was built and automated, humans left the island forever. 
other dangerous places have been created by humanity itself. One of the craziest is North Yungus Road in Bolivia. This is a 43-mile stretch of road that winds through the mountains. The narrow trail is cut into the cliff side with a sheer drop on one side. If you looked out your window, you would see a 2,000-foot drop into a seemingly never-ending chasm. It's described as a cycle path, but you can often see huge trucks traveling along this road. This can cause huge problems because the road isn't wide enough for two large vehicles to pass each other. About 300 cars go missing here every year. The constant rockfalls, waterfalls, fog, and rain make this place even more dangerous. Bolivia is home to another dangerous place that you wouldn't want to risk visiting, Madidi National Park. The park is a vast jungle, larger than 20 New York cities. The whole area is filled with dangerous plants, animals, and insects. It's highly discouraged to visit this park without being accompanied by experts. Unlike humans, some living things can survive in incredibly hostile conditions. The Gateway to the Underworld in Turkmenistan would be completely impossible to visit for any human being. The terrifying crater was made when a gas field collapsed in on itself. This freed all of the dangerous gases, so scientists decided to set it alight to prevent it from poisoning the surrounding area. The fire was lit 50 years ago, and it still burns today. The temperature at the bottom of the crater is extremely high, but some bacteria have found a way to survive, even here. These bacteria are entirely unique to this one small area, and they live entirely engulfed in flames. Similarly, life can also exist at extremely low temperatures. Scientists drilled a borehole 12,000 feet deep into the ice of Antarctica. On these excavated pieces of ice, they found an unknown bacterium. We don't have any idea how it could survive such extreme temperatures. What's more, bacteria can exist even in space. Scientists found bacteria on the outer surface of the International Space Station. It spent three years there at extremely low temperatures and intense solar radiation, and still, it survived. 